Jason Johnson is about to get bumped. We might not have room for both of y'all, okay? Like, Jason... I love that on this show, you do Tuesdays, and he'll do Wednesdays, and you have a tough act to follow. He can repeat everything you say on Tuesday, or Tuesday, or Wednesday. That's Michael, don't you think? Like, that would be a nice little dynamic. You can set the table for him, because he needs your help talking you just, about sports, see, especially football. See, I, I feel like... And now I feel like I gotta rush to Jason's defense because now y'all crushing the brother. Like he's not even here. Y'all just like going in on him now. <laughs>
a, a part of me feels like it's it's worth it, you know? Like I couldn't live with myself mm -hmm. seeing that. And so I just, I don't know, a part of me wonders, what if we buck that fear? What if the entire community surrounded this man and said, no, not today? We're done. Because something has to change, mm -hmm. right? We keep seeing this over and over yeah. and over and over. When when will it stop? Jason? So it's a couple things. You know, one, it's interesting. What Tiffany just mentioned, I actually talked about my, I talked with my class about this on Tuesday. And I brought up what happened to George Floyd. I talked about the crowd around him. And I brought up that whole, that, that sort of slavery notion that everybody's had that conversation when you were 14, 15 years. Man, if I had been a slave, ain't no way. I'd have done this to Massa. I'd have mm -hmm. run away. I'd have smacked the missus upside the head. Everybody likes to say what they would have done if they were Lupita Nyong'o. Everybody likes to say what they would have done during 12 years of slavery. But the fact of the matter is, the reason that any oppressive system works is because people fear death. That's it. We're mortal beings. We fear death. People know what cops do. They know that cops kill people for nothing. They know that cops shoot, shot Atiana Jefferson in her house playing video games. They know that off-duty cops can shoot Trayvon Martin or kill Botham Jean in his house eating ice cream. And as long as we fear death because we are mortal beings, that yeah. kind of violence is going to happen. And so I, I, I'm one of those people, and I tweeted about this, guys. You know, you find this on the I'm one of those people like, look, if it ain't for work, I don't see any reason why anybody should watch this trial. Why watch this show trial in a criminal justice system that we know ain't for us, that was basically constructed to allow white people to kill black people whenever they want to with little or no consequence? That's what our justice system does. So I, I but see Jason, no let reason. Me, can I, I, I ask you, you Jason? I, I, I see no reason unless, there's, unless you have a work reason to watch this charade of a trial, especially since he's probably going to get convicted and everybody's going to clap their hands and pretend like something was accomplished and it does nothing for the overall nature of our justice system, which still allows black people to be murdered and killed with impunity. Well, let me let me ask you, Jason, because I understand, I agree with what you're saying about, we all, we do, we fear death. Um, and, and like I said, I think this, it was designed this way. But let me, so you remember during the Black Lives Matter movement where they had war tanks facing off against young Black people protesting. And there's that image of that Black woman alone walking towards the cops, fearless, yeah. you know, standing mm -hmm. between the oppressor and the people who are fighting oppression. I just feel like tapping into that spirit of fearlessness matters. There's also the notion of, um, you know, biker games. You know, you never right. hear about cops kneeling on a biker's neck. They're not going into right. biker areas, busting up bike fights because they fear that there might be a repercussion. So I don't have the right. answer. I'm definitely not trying to say, well, if I was there, I would, you know, I don't know. But I do think it's worth asking the question, what, what can change? Because body cameras have done nothing but give us a better no. view of watching ourselves get murdered at the hands of law enforcement. So I just want, and if we can't depend on the criminal justice system, because you're saying, well, he's going to get convicted. Well, I don't know that I can even support that. I'm waiting to see, because we've seen other egregious actions happen and go, you know, unpunished. So I'm waiting to see that. It would be yeah, hard for him not to get convicted. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm I just, fairly confident he's going to be convicted. I'm fairly confident, and, and, and here's why: because you are? Mm. every single oppressive I'm system. Say, I'm not. A, yeah, tell, please tell us, because I'm not. And, and y'all, and y'all know I'm a I'm a cynic and a realist on this, but I have no yeah. doubt. I have no doubt that that Trump is going to be convicted because every mm. single oppressive system occasionally throws some red meat at the people they're abusing because they know there's a line at which the system will have absolutely no legitimacy. And I take you five years ago, six years ago, you guys remember Daniel Holdsclaw? That was the white cop that was a serial rapist in Oklahoma City? Oh, yeah. And I yeah. mean, like, there were all sorts of questions about that. And I remember talking to local black lawyers and activists and everything. I was like, man, he's going to get off. It was right after Trayvon and, and Ferguson and everything. Like, oh, no, no, they're going to convict him. I was like, really? And I didn't believe them. And they're like, look, no white cop will ever be able to walk into a black neighborhood again if they let this guy get away with raping 18 black women in the black community. There is a line. There is a line that even they will pretend that they can't cross because white supremacy requires the patina and the propaganda that it has some legitimacy to. 
It has to occasionally give us a Barack Obama to make us think that we have an opportunity. It has to give us a Kamala Harris. It has to it has to sacrifice give us a sacrificial lamb white cop. That's what this is. That's a good point. Overall, I I love where your head is, but and I, I think the. The only issue with the, with the comp there is is raping eighteen black women is off duty. I don't believe that that's not that's not in the line of duty. That doesn't fit with the narrative of these people have a tough job, and then right. somebody right. was out, a black man was yeah. a threat and out of control and needed to be neutralized. I, my issue is I'm with you overall with the system, Jason. Mm-hmm. I, I just all it takes is one. So whether it's right. second-degree okay. murder, second degree murder manslaughter, one person yeah. is going to f- see this Derek Chauvin's way. At least one person. And they might get nine, they might get ten. They ain't getting 12 to all convict mm-hmm. the cops. Because as much as they want to say this is not about policing in America, that's exactly oh, what yeah. this trial is. It is, a, it is, the po- it is police in America trial the Der- and a Derek Chauvin trial. And, and I just don't know that. I, I'm not... I, I'm, I've, I've, I'm, I'm with you, Tiffany. I've seen this movie before. It's different actors, right. different script. But but same outcome. I, I agree. I'm just I'm sorry, unconsciously. Michael, you, you want to say something? Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. No, Mike. Go ahead. I want oh, Tiffany, Tiffany go first. Well, I'm just saying I'm cautiously optimistic because we've seen such compelling uh, testimony and we've seen you know the evidence. It seems like it should be an open and shut case, but I just want to remind us, uh, everybody, that the defense has not yet put on their case. And even though this is a Derek Chauvin trial, we know that they're going to put everything about George Floyd on trial uh, when it's their turn. They put Donald and Williams on trial point, yesterday. They just need they put one. Donald Williams on trial. Yeah. But, but, but see, guys, it, but this is this is again why why I sort of view it the way I do. I'm not. It doesn't make me happy that I think Derek Chauvin mm-hmm. is going to be convicted because to me, it's a makeup right. call. It's a makeup call at the yeah. end of the game because they know the game has been rigged against us the whole time. And occasionally, occasionally they will give us a makeup call. And, and I'll also say this about, about Chauvin in particular. Yes, we know they're, every single black American is always on trial when these things happen. But I'll tell you this, just from a pure PR standpoint, even compared to George Zimmerman, even compared to, to Wilson, Derek Chauvin is not a sympathetic figure at all. Like, he, he, there, like there's nothing about him they've been able to present in this year since this has happened, it ain't they ain't got no pictures of him double dutching with black kids. They don't have any pictures of him <laughs> serving ice cream. There's nothing like yeah. that with this guy. Like they can't spin this and be like, he was a good dude. So that's the other thing that I think works in in, in favor of him being a sacrificial lamb, because there's no story of heroism or patriotism yeah. or something else that they can throw out. You know what? I I, I want I want to switch switch gears here and bring up something else. Yesterday I had in my feed that I should have roasted Tim Scott. Then I had it in uh, again today, and I said, well, wait a minute. We got Tiffany on. We got Jason on. They could do it better than I can. So uh, I just want to hear from y'all. You got some of that Megan McCain smoke left? You got some of that Megan McCain? (laughs) Megan McCain. (laughs) By the way, (laughs) Tiffany, that was so brilliant. That was so good. Uh, fantastic. And how many times did she say, my father, my father, my father, my father, my father? Oh, my God. How many times? That, was, that, was, yeah. that was the remix. That was that outstanding. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... But Tim Scott, Tim Scott, I feel yeah. like I've been picking on him for a long time. Uh, and so now we can all pick on him together. What do you guys think he was, what was going through his mind where he came up with this phrase that he, that he crafted, woke supremacy, uh, supremacy, and he thought that was Equivalent, he said it. Equivalent or worse, <laughs> the white supremacy. What? <laughs> so what's up with this dude? Y'all tell me what, what's going on with, with, with Tim Scott here. So you know, it, you know it, it, it's interesting, I think, with Senator Scott, because as Jason knows, he's been quite outspoken on the tumultuous relationship with law enforcement and black men. He was one of um, the three co-sponsors of the anti-lynching bill in the Senate. But as we know, there are two sides to every token. And this brother fell so hard for the (laughs) oppressor. He so craved that approval, that white gaze that he wants, that he is constantly willing to humiliate himself in order to get some of that love from the white man who he thinks has bestowed upon him his everything in life. And it's really uh, sad to see and not surprising, quite honestly. Um, Look, I didn't touch this on my show because I felt like it was 
beneath my dignity to even address, to be quite honest with you. I've never heard of uh, woke supremacy. Um, I, I don't know anybody I from the nation stick. of woke or has a, the ethnic identity yeah. of woke. It's kind of like that whole Blue Lives Matter. I don't know anybody with blue skin, so none of it ever made any mm. sense to me. Uh, but I think at this point, he wasn't talking to us. He was talking right. to white people who want to find a submissive Negro who says things that are palatable to them so they can lie to themselves yeah. about not being uh, white supremacists or white supremacist apologists bigots. And so he provides them that fodder. You know, there's, there's, there's selling out, there's compromising your integrity, there's bojangling, there's dancing, uh, there's, there's cosplaying as Steven. Uh, there's, there's, there's becoming sort of the male version of the diamond. And so there are several ways that you can shame and embarrass yourself as an elected official. I do think Tim Scott may have actually found a brand new way to embarrass himself in public, because this is, this is what gets me about all this. It's not just the silliness of the word. It's the fact that, like, nobody asked you, okay? Like, you didn't have to say anything. <laughs> Shutting up is always free. So the fact that he had to jump in front of Calvin Candy, yeah. <laughs> you know, at the limit, he couldn't have anything. But he had to jump in front of a hail of justifiable rhetorical bullets from common sense people in law enforcement and politics in order to save the people who ultimately will never make him president, won't even make him governor. That's the part that always galls me. I'm cool with people being conservative. I'm cool with people having different points of view. What I don't understand is perpetually jumping on a racist grenade and hoping that one day they're going to put your face on a plaque in Piggly Wiggly. It won't happen. It won't happen. Tim Scott is never going to get anywhere. He might get Waffle House. So, you know, <laughs> so at the end of the day, you know, there is no, there is no credibility uh, to doing that kind of defense. And I, I, think, Holly, and I, I think it's really important that you bring this up because what we never want to do, and both you and Michael have both said this, what we never want to do is give people like that credibility. We never want to pretend that they actually speak for anybody. They don't even speak for other Black conservatives. They don't speak right. for Michael Steele. Yeah. They don't speak for Orlando. They don't speak for a lot of Black Republicans I know. Because, again, as Tiffany mentioned, you know, I don't remember any time in my history books, apparently they were all written by liberals, because I don't remember woke supremacists marching through the streets of University of Michigan, okay, and smacking Republicans upside the head. I don't remember woke supremacists, you know, dragging Republicans out of their Alabama football game bars and beating them in the middle of the street. But I do remember white supremacists doing that. I remember white supremacists doing that to a black state legislature in Georgia last week for having the audacity to want to yeah. see the governor sign a bill. So when right. woke supremacy gets that dangerous, I'll be listening, willing to listen to Tim Scott. Can I? I want. I have a question. Yeah, um, Am I allowed to oh, ask sorry. a question? Yes, of course no, you can. I, you no, ain't got no time to ask questions. It's Tim, not your show. Come just, on, just so, just so you know. Show. Hold on, ground show. rules, real quick. Just so you know. Michael and I had every intention of completely ceding the show to the two of you. Like, so, <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely, ask away. We're sitting there watching. We're watching. Thank it's, you. A, it's a good show. It's a good show. We're watching it. Thank you. I have a question for Michael and Michael, because I will ask Jason, but he doesn't know about sports the way we do. Wow. So my question... Wow. 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 My question wow. conflates you know sports... This kind of nonsense... This kind of slander, this kind of slander, this is cancel culture. Okay, she's trying to cancel me. <laughs> well, Jason, you can... I know can... so much more about sports than she does. But okay, all right. You can Jeff. weigh in. You can weigh in, too. But my question Tiffany. really is, it conflates sports and politics. And so a lot of people, we're talking about voter suppression, right? And it's a lot of voter suppression happening all over the country, but very blatant voter suppression happening in the South and the Bible Belt. But that's not to say it's not happening in Michigan and Pennsylvania, like everywhere. But what I'm seeing happen in Georgia and Florida and other states, people keep tagging me in these posts and sending me DMs and emailing me saying the way to stop this is to have uh, athletes refuse to go play for schools right. where uh, in states where there's voter suppression. Um, right. And perhaps you can take it further and say professional athletes will not play for teams uh, in states that, that practice voter suppression. And I'm just curious if that's a realistic solution 
um, if that's something that we mm. should be talking about and exploring. Um, you know, I hate to lay the failure of Hello. democracy at the feet of black athletes, but you know, and not just black athletes, right. really all athletes, but I'm just curious right. if that's a, a solution. What I don't know if this works as an answer, but I'll try it anyway, because it, it honestly brings to mind what you asked off the top um, about what if the crowd would just say, not today. Uh, mm -hmm. and, 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 and we talked about being paralyzed by that fear. Um, I think the only way to affect actual change is to affect people's bottom line. That's, that, that's, that, that goes for Yollywood. Uh, that goes for uh, the entertainment industry. That goes for yeah. the All-Star Game, Major League Baseball in Atlanta coming up. That goes for the Masters. That goes for professional sports, collegiate sports. Delta, Coca-Cola, Home Depot, yeah. Arthur Blank just put out a statement. Go down the list. The only way that they're actually going to feel our wrath is through their wallets and through their pockets. Uh, you're right. right. It's, it should never be on black people in general or athletes in particular to fix a problem that we didn't create, Tiffany. But nonetheless... Uh, I would love to see an, uh, an economic uprising like you just described, uh, led by some of these leagues, not just the players, but some of these leagues yeah. who conveniently decided to say Black Lives Matter, because that was easy. It wasn't easy to say, right. as Michael Chase said, they matter. Black lives, they matter. It wasn't even, it wasn't yeah, even hard. It wasn't even hard to put Black Lives Matter. Yeah, exactly. Put it on the it court. wasn't even hard to put Black Lives Matter on a basketball court in a bubble and then take it off the next year as if Black Lives no longer matter. So it, right. so it went from not mattering to mattering in the bubble to they're off the court now. Regardless, I, I, I think that is something that not only should be discussed, but should be explored by leadership. This is the time. Coincidentally or fittingly, I should say, fittingly, we're talking about voting, Michael Holly. This is the time to stand up and be counted when you're a corporation or a sports league right. or, 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 or an entity that has the economic power and influence to actually make these people suffer for making it harder to vote, not easier. And I, I think it's realistic. I do think it's realistic, Tiffany, with more people being involved. I mean, you, you old school hip hop fans remember uh, Public Enemies by the time I get to Arizona, remember that? Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, that was connected to uh, the governor of Arizona who would not sign the MLK holiday into law. Yeah. They were supposed to have the Super Bowl early. NFL moved yeah. that back until Arizona would agree to have MLK uh, holiday be a real holiday. So, and that was that was in the era. What's that? That was the era before the internet. That was before yes, yeah. professional athletes on on the regular spoke up about issues outside of sports. Now you have professional athletes doing it. You have college athletes doing it. Now some of these athletes have been savvy enough to get their owners, these these league owners, on the hook. Are you for mm -hmm. us or against us? Not right. declare. You got to declare. And if you say you're for us, mm -hmm. then you got to put your you got to put your words behind it, but you got to put your money and your influence behind it too. So I think it's I think it's very possible. That it, that honestly, it, Jason, yeah. before you jump in, Jason, it, I don't think it would it wouldn't surprise me, Jason, given that this summer we saw the NBA yeah. players in particular walk out, and, and it, yep. it amounted to a mental health break because they went back to work eventually. It would not surprise me to see somebody like a LeBron James, for instance. I'm not saying yeah. it's all on him. Say right. like like like. Like plenty of players used to do when in the era of segregation, I'm not going to play here, I'm not going to eat here, or I'm not going to stay in this hotel. I could see a LeBron James deciding, you won't see me in Atlanta next road trip. I'm sorry, yeah. Jason, go ahead. You uh, didn't get yeah. a chance to no, win. You, you, I, I agree. You guys are all right, because the, the one thing that I think about, honestly, Tiffany, is Major League Baseball is the, the players. Like, this is the interesting thing. NFL players... You got some conservatives, but you got some real outspoken progressive NFL players. You have a lot of progressive, uh, ambitious, politically savvy players who are in the WNBA and in the NBA. Major League Baseball players can be real hit and miss, right? So that that's it, it has to come from the players if they were going to cancel the All-Star game or threaten to leave. But here's the thing. It happened in North Carolina when they tried to pass that ridiculous anti-trans bill. It happened in Indiana when Mike Pence was trying to make gay marriage illegal. It happened in Arizona mm -hmm. uh, when I think it was Jan Brewer, the governor, tried to, to pass that law, you know, show me your papers for anybody who was Hispanic. So there's a precedent for this. And I suspect it's going to happen because you've already seen, you've seen Coca-Cola flip the bottle. You've seen Home Depot turn on the lights. You've seen Delta say you are free to move about the country, <laughs> but don't move here. Like every, like Delta switched this morning. <laughs> and said, that's no longer acceptable. So 
you know, Stacy and Insei Ufa and, and Latasha yeah. Brown and all of our crew down there are putting a whole hell of a lot of pressure. And what often happens is once athletes see that ownership or large businesses have already started to back off, it makes it easier for them to then say, you know what, I don't even want to, I don't even want to be associated with this. And, you know, do yeah. I think this law is going to be thrown out? I don't think so. But do I think they're going to back off on some parts of it? Yeah. I mean, like, not being able to give people water in line. Come on, y'all. <laughs> you can't like, no they're not even masking right. their intention. They right. DGAF, right. okay? They're right. like, don't give nobody right. water in line. It's ridiculous. <laughs> they're blatant right. with for it. For those of you who have to stand yeah. in line, and you know who you are, <laughs> no water exactly. for you. <laughs> no water. Right. Exactly. But you know what? Uh, uh, and just a tag on to that last point, too, with, with athletes putting pressure, leading the charge. Ask uh, Kelly Leffler how that works out. You turn against Yo. the WNBA players, and they land a dream. Ask Kelly Leffler and ask Raphael Warnock. Right. Because all of That's a sudden, he, 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 was it a coincidence? His numbers right. started to shoot through the polls, and she was out. That's and she's, out of a she's out of a team now, too. That's I just true. want to see a whole bunch of people lined up to vote this fall, and then like a bunch of athletes, Richard Sherman, LeBron, whatever, show up with a truckload of Gatorade and be like, "I dare you." <laughs> it's <laughs> not water. Right. They Gatorade. weren't handing out water. Right. This Gatorade. This ain't water, right. so they can hand yeah. it out. I mean, but the thing is, look, they've tried this so many times. We'll survive this. I mean, black voters, we have gone through so much. I mean, they lynched us for voting. The rule says in Georgia, you can't hand out water within 150 feet from a polling location. So guess what's going to happen in 2022? You're going to have a bunch of people 150 feet from the polling location handing out water, pizza, food, care packages, ice cups, all of it. You can't stop. They try to shut us down. We bring bring food. Tiffany, we bring food to the movie theater. Back when we used to go to movie right. theaters, we bring, we bring all, we bring all, we bring all stuff. We, we, exactly. you, ain't t- you ain't telling us nothing. Bring some, bring, bring your own water. No problem. No, not a problem. We've been bringing exactly. stuff, sneaking stuff Look, in. I've seen in our purses and whatnot. in line to get a COVID shot. Like we, <laughs> black people don't go anywhere where it's more than twenty minutes where we can get access to food. So that's a given. That's not going. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> uh, Tiffany? Do you have any other questions, or can I? Well, I want to. Can you know, I, I you know, just have this one your, more this question, your... if you don't mind? Look at her. Yeah. Um, Look at her. No, this, this is our show, but it's your happen. segment. Well, so go, go ahead. Yes. Absolutely. So go right today, ahead. Oh, what... The Supreme Court heard arguments around this dispute with the NCAA. Uh, Congress is eyeing the NCAA. And I'm just curious. I've asked this question before. And by the time I get on my show on Saturday, I want to know what I'm talking about. I want to sound like an expert. So I'm getting my intel here. <laughs> She's uh, going I'm to curious. steal what you, you can't say. Call those I'm curious. curious. Uh, well, you want to do that? That's right. Oh, Read between the lines. Read between the lines. Will, That's what, yeah. will we ever see these student athletes being compensated in a significant way? Because that's, I mean, that's at the crux of this, right? And there's a congresswoman, uh, Lori Trahan, I think from Massachusetts, who's take, picked up this mantle, talked about the disparities between men and women, um, and just this whole argument that these athletes are essentially workers and, and not getting compensated. So just curious your opinion and if that is going to change policy-wise. And even also that Instagram ahead, stuff that I sent you guys earlier in the week. That them not you even didn't see no Instagram stuff, that. Jason. What Instagram stuff am I being left out of? Is there a group chat? <laughs> You're left out of the about? conversation, Tiffany. I'm sorry. We actually if it's a group chat, tag, tag yeah, me, Michael. If it's a group chat, garbage. tag me in, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, no, no, hold on, no. <laughs> There is no, no, you're not, I'm sorry, Tiffany. We'll get to your question in a second, but this, I cannot allow you in a group chat. Just like you got your own, the sisters got their group chat, don't they? We ain't in that group chat, are we? Are we? That's so right. We want to be in. We want to be in that group chat. Yeah. Thank you. We'll just listen. We'll listen. We'll listen. (laughs) I have to get Jamel's permission. Go ahead, Jason. (laughs) Go ahead, Jason. You got the first track. So it's it's going, so earlier this week, there was an article that, you know, the men folk sharing. And we were talking about the fact that if you look, if you look at Instagram, uh, in the NCAA tournament, eight of the top 10 people, uh, student athletes with the highest Instagram followings are women. And if they were able wow. to, uh, to, if they were able to monetize that, even just for endorsements and everything else like that, some of these, some of these young women would be bringing in six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars a year. You have Instagram influencers on campus in dorms making that kind of money, but a student athlete whose name and likeness 
is bringing millions into their school and TV rights, can't even do anything with their Instagram. So it was a really good article. It was on Axios. Um, I think they should. Mm -hmm. I think at some point, they may not be able to get full endorsement contracts, but I, I think there's probably going to be some stipulation that allows them to make money off of social media. I don't think you can block that because arguably, if I'm not making money as an athlete, but maybe I'm making money as a fashion icon on Instagram, how, how's the NCAA, NCAA going to stop me for that? That's not necessarily yeah. making money off the sport itself. Yeah, yeah, they have to Very be a problem. There it is. There's a list. Yeah. There's a list with uh, Paige Becker's Player of the Year. And eight, uh, and eight of the top ten are women, by the way. Eight, wow. eight of those, eight of those, uh, eight of those names are, are females. But you know, I, I don't know how you feel about it, Mike. I, I would think it will happen one day where athletes are compensated. But I think the step before that is is got to be the systematic dismantling of the NCAA. See that scenario that Jason just mentioned. Like, how are you going to stop me? I did have something to do with basketball. I'm doing my thing on the side. I'm a fashion model. People will compensate me for that. The NCAA has language restricting that. The NCAA has oh, language. Wow. You know, I, I'll tell you this, Tiffany. Uh, a few years ago, uh, one of one of uh, the interns at the radio station I worked at was a college athlete at BC, uh, Boston College. And I was going to give this student a ride back to campus, probably 15 minutes. NCAA violation. You can't do that. Wow. You can't buy certain okay. meals for these athletes. So the NCAA, first of all, needs to have its knees cut out from under it. And then, then we'll start to have some progress. But it's going to be a long process. Right. And a lot of money, too. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm going to do what I did. Think, I'm, I'm gonna think do about the I money. Did. Okay, I'm sorry, Mike. I was just going to say, Mike, one more thing. Think about the money involved, yeah. the contract. It's the NCAA tournament. That's why it's so fraudulent. And everybody, oh, this is such a beautiful tournament, amateur tournament. This is a bit, this is we're talking about billions of dollars yeah. involved in the broadcasting of the NCAA tournament, billions. And right. the students aren't getting that money. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I did earlier with, uh, with, with we go back to another point. It's all, it's all connected. Jason, you were talking about how every now and then the system throws you a bone, you know, gives mm -hmm. you, gives you I, I think the, the, the bone in this case is going to be name, name, image, and likeness. I think, I think they'll yeah. win in terms of being able to monetize their name, image, and likeness, endorsements, that sort of thing, their Instagram, social media following. But I don't see a world, as long as the NCAA is in place, and, it's, and let's make no mistake about it, the NCAA doesn't just make money or is not the governing body that helps to facilitate uh, these tournaments that, and these events that make money for their institutions and their administrators and their coaches and their staffs, their universities, also for TV networks, you know, like mm -hmm. the media. There's too many people, you know, too sucking many, at this teat, if you will. You know right, what I mean? Absolutely. The system is too big and too powerful <laughs> to yep. ever pay these athletes what they're worth commiserate with the value that they bring to the table. I don't see a world in which they are actually, they are employees, but I don't see a world in which they are paid like employees. I mean, maybe there might yeah. be some better benefits down the road. I think name, image, and life is going to be the middle ground, and that might be as far as we go. Hey, hey, give, give Tiffany the refrain. A anytime you talk about, if you are pro NCAA and you talk about paying athletes, their refrain is what? Oh, you, you're getting that, you're getting an education? You're, get, you're getting a scholarship? <laughs> oh, that, okay. that, that, that's your, that's your oh. salary. The scholarship is your salary. <laughs> That's always it. That's, that's, been, we, that's always it. I mean, you want to talk horrible. long before me, one of my first term papers was why collegiate athletes should be paid in high school. I mean, it's like, and long before me, people were writing about it. And since then, people, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's the same old story, but there does seem to be some semblance of progress. The only thing I wanted to ask y'all uh, before we let y'all go on the political tip was really, you talked about cancel, the so-called cancel culture earlier. Jason, you mentioned it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Florida Congressman uh, Matt Gates, <laughs> not so much Matt. Oh, Gates. Go, bring it on! I'm actually no, no, no. I'm just hit. Wait, how did the kid say it? Uh, it was the Tucker Carlson interview for me. Like, I just wanted to see if he could pull Tucker Carlson down with him somehow. That was the thing I enjoyed. I don't care about Matt Gates. I'm just like, yo, can you drag Tucker down with you somehow? Speaking of cancel culture, there you go. Cancel that guy. So I don't know what y'all think about this whole story in general. I'm confused trying to follow who's extorting who and 17 and pay for play. So enlighten me, guys. And he's also talking too much, too. He's already talking. Thank like, you. dude, stop talking. Stop, stop, stop. That's talking. how you know he's guilty. That's how you know he's guilty.
healthy. It's like when your man come in the house at three in the morning and wake you up, like, no, 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 see what happened was. <laughs> Mike, Mike got flat tire, and then, well, what you being all that for? Like, I already know what's going on. We can't relate to that, Tiffany. We can't relate. I'm going to slide into bed and tell you in the morning. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Exactly. I don't have to have a relationship in bed unless I knew I already did something dirty. Yeah, yeah. I, I, for one, I, y'all, I was, I'm watching this interview and I had to rewatch the interview because Tucker Carlson's face was like, you ain't gonna get me in this. Like, when he started talking, <laughs> he's like, come on, Tucker, you were there? Tucker's like, nah, man, nah, cut his wife, cut his wife. I don't remember you. He was, I mean, he, was he did a full variety of, I don't know her throughout that whole interview. Yeah. And I don't know what Matt Gates was thinking by even opening his mouth, telling the world that he and his father are double agents and, and he's got this, this son who's not really his son. There's a whole lot of really strange things going on in this situation. But quite frankly, if you are being accused of something, the best and smartest thing to do is shut the heck up until the accusations are clear. Then you talk. What you don't do is go on television and say, well, you were there, and you were there, and you were there, and you were there, and you were there. That didn't make no sense to me. I mean, I think Dave Chappelle, what Matt Gaines is about to get. It was Hakeem Akbar, the educated brother from the bank. <laughs> if I'm going down, all y'all elected. going down with me. <laughs> He's a, he is a, you know, the sad part about it is, like, he's Florida man, right? He's just another iteration of Florida yeah. man. And I think this, um, the, the whole idea of the Republican Party and the fact that they have, the commonality that they have with this weird, creepy, old white guy club where they defend accused pedo- uh, uh, pedophiles like Roy Moore in Alabama, um, where they defend accused wife beaters like a homie from the White House. Um, and now you have Matt Getz, you know, allegedly having sexual relations with a 17-year-old girl. And you don't see the Republican Party fleeing from him um, no. because if really this is not the worst thing he's done. Um, it, it's equally horrible and horrific to other things he's done. I mean, he was defending violent insurrectionists. Um, he has a mugshot already on record, which we can see. Uh, so I, I think it uh, speaks to a larger problem about the Republican Party and this quote-unquote pro-life slash anti-choice party who's so concerned about children, um, except when it comes to members of their party who apparently like to date them. So it's really sad and unfortunate because my thought immediately goes to the 17-year-old girl and how she found herself yeah. a part of this weird, gross circle. Uh, and I hope that wherever she okay, is, that she's it. okay now. I, I just want to add this also. When you're in an interview and you mistakenly say 17-year-old woman, but everybody knows a 17-year-old I girl. Mean, That's very I much mean, in that R. Kelly conversation where he was like, what you mean by teenage? R. <laughs> like, like when you got to start coming up weird. with definitions and specifications, you already know you're wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well... <laughs> That's all I got. Hey, listen. No, I mean, that, that's it. That's that's a good way to that's no, a good way to no. shut it down right there. Cause no, I'm I'm, I'm legit I, debating. I'm like, should I just completely monopolize that after? You got another question, Tiffany? Yes, yes, t- yes, no, yes, I Tiffany. Just, absolutely. I don't, I don't have a question, but I, if you will just permit oh. me a quick second, because honestly, you guys, after watching the Derek Chauvin trial and seeing um, the MMA fighter and all the people, and I just. I know that um, black women have certainly been victims of uh, violence at the hands of law enforcement, but I'm feeling a little full today. And I just want to tell you all that I love the conversation with you all. I love seeing you all smile and laugh and witness this black man joy and having a free space to express these thoughts. So I just want to send you all love for giving me a space to talk and laugh on a day like today. And just send y'all love as just fellow members of my community and what you all mean to the culture and the thing, the ways that you contribute to the conversation. Uh, I think it's so important. And so many people I know watch. Michael, I have to tell you, I have a friend. Her son is uh, obsessed with you. Um, he thinks you are the bee's knees. And uh, he's so impressed that I know you. Uh, he's like, he was on Which TV. Michael? I'm like, you know I'm on TV, too. <laughs> you. Which Michael? You. Oh, okay. Michael, I don't want to assume. Michael Smith. Michael Smith. Mike my Smith. friend's son. Yeah, he is obsessed with um, Michael Smith and Bomani Jones. He thinks that you all are yeah. the best thing ever. 
um, and, and talk to me about both you guys. So I just, I feel just full being here with y'all. And I just wanted to express that as we witness this horrific crime wow. over and over, it's nice to see life and, and joy uh, from people who look like me and wow. my black man counterparts. And I love you, brothers, oh, and you. I want y'all to know that. Thank you. We love you, too. Thank you. Uh, we love you, too. Um, Thank you for the work you're doing, um, for holding us down. And by us, I mean all of us, not just the three <laughs> of us, not just black men. But, you know, the, we, we, the, what you do on Saturdays is you know how highly I think of you, how, we, how highly we all think of you. And thank you for that. It's stuff like that that just goes to show uh, just how beautiful you are uh, as, a, as a person and as a soul. Um, both of you guys, like, honestly, we love both of you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. All for Seriously, like, you guys got a lot of shows y'all could be doing, and y'all doing ours, <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> And, and I just I want to add, as a Surgeon General's warning, don't be fooled by this public kindness, because I got text messages to prove that this is just a sham. <laughs> this, this is just a sham performance that she puts on to make herself look nice, y'all. I got text to prove I'm like, but that's okay. I'm accepted. Michael knows consent. me just as well as Jason knows me, and he knows. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm going to see this. I'll, I'll accept the public praise. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was well, saying that to, every to Michael and Michael. I didn't mean to include Jason and not that level. <laughs> exactly. That was for Michael and Michael. <laughs> I thought I wasn't included. I wasn't included. I didn't get a ticket in the club. Well, I'm used to it. <laughs> so, sooner, or, sooner or later, somebody going to... It's been said a million times, and I'm going to just be the million and first person to say it. Sooner or later, somebody going to just give y'all a full-time show. Because the hour hey, party ready. after the cross we connection ready. on Saturday we is, ready. is, is must see. That should have happened. IGTV. Already. That should have happened. Already. Already. But they, they, Ain't nobody they're calling busy anyway. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> well, keep coming back here. We appreciate you. Happy to. Keep inviting me. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.